As far as Dusty Rhodes, you mentioned you wrestled him at the Orange Bowl. Uh, yeah. What did you think of him as a personality? Was he always pretty good with you? or Dusty? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Dusty and I got along. Uh, uh, perfect. I mean, uh, Rick and I met, uh, Rick and I were living together uh, when we were training to uh, start wrestling. This is right after the Olympic Games in 72. And uh, a couple guys from Texas had just moved into the AWA. And that's Dick Murdoch and Dusty Rhodes. And they had an apartment uh, over at this brand new condo building, uh, Cedar Zedina, they called it. And so uh, I don't know how in the hell we got over there in January. It was right in the middle of a snowstorm. And we got, got over to their apartment. So now uh, I had never met Dick or Dusty before. Rick had just met him like a day or two before that. So uh, they invited us uh, to come over to their place. So we walk in, the phone rings. And Murdoch answers the phone. is Dusty's wife on the other end. Says, Dusty, it's your wife. She wants to talk to you. Oh, God. And so he gets on the phone. They talk for about an hour. And uh, I think Dustin, uh, he's the oldest one, Dustin. Yeah. Other boys. He was just born. So this was in 73. And uh, well, yeah, I don't know if he was just born. He was at least a year old. And uh, the wife wanted him to quit wrestling and come home. Otherwise, she was going to get a divorce. Well, she got a divorce. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. and uh, But, yeah, they were wild. Uh, we went down to, uh, uh, there was this cowboy bar down, just off the downtown area in Minneapolis. God, I can't remember the name of it. But, uh we were down there hooting and hollering. And I guess a week after that, uh, Murdoch wrote, wrote a mule, you know, a donkey, rode a donkey into the fucking bar. And, oh, God, it was a big place, you know, it was a big bar. And I guess all kinds of shit went down. Uh, I wasn't there with them, but... Uh, yeah, those were. <laughs> Can you imagine one of these new new age wrestlers riding a donkey into a fucking bar? Yeah, they don't do anything, but they only wrestle once a week, and they they play video games. I don't know if you've heard they're they've pretty much eliminated house shows now. They whine more than ever, yeah, and they don't go out at all. Wow. Yeah, I remember. Two, three years ago, you had mentioned to me that uh, they go after the matches, they, uh, instead of chasing girls and going out uh, to the whiskey bars, they just go back to their hotel room and play video games. Yeah, and most of the fans are male now. Male? Yeah, there's not that many women fans left. Wow. Especially for AEW, the WWE's competition. It's almost... 100% male. So the days of the groupies are long gone. Wow. I remember pulling up to the back of the buildings, you know, whether it be San Francisco, Cal Palace, or the big arena there in Chicago, Dallas, Atlanta, Charlotte, uh, Minneapolis. Didn't matter where we pulled up, pulled up in the back to go in the locker room. There'd be 50 girls out there. And you could, you had the pick of the litter. I mean, those girls were wild. I mean, they, they'd uh, latch on to you. And <clears throat> there was a couple, there was this one girl down in uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. And uh, man, she was a gorgeous girl. She, She's about 10 years younger than me. Hell, I, 
I could have married her. And uh, I'm sure it wouldn't have lasted, but <laughs> but she was uh, she was that nice. And uh, I used to go down to Wilmington early, uh, uh, you know, four or five hours before the show. And we'd go out and do things. Uh, but yeah, she was a beauty. There's another girl up in Winnipeg uh, that uh, same way. Yeah. Let's see. Well, there was one in Raleigh, North Carolina. There, hey, there were there were beautiful women everywhere, and they were all. You know, of course, I was a lot younger then, but yeah, you know, they they were all between twenty one and twenty five. You know, gorgeous. 